click on open. And now if I look at this, I'm going to open the composition. You can see that I have one layer for each layer in the Illustrator file. And that is exactly what I want. So I can go in and animate things like the, I can separate the, select the, the wings or the big halves separately, and I can go in and create an animation. Now, um, one thing to remember, when we're working with graphics files like this with multiple layers, we're doing something that's known as nested animation. So what I want to do is any individual animation for the individual layers, like for the beak or for the wing, that is going to be done in this bird underscore AE composition. But anything that's done to the bird as a whole, if I want to scale the bird up or down, or I want to make the, the bird fly across the composition, then I need to take that bird underscore AE composition and actually nest it in another composition. So my next step, I'm actually going to go in and click on the Create a New Composition button. This is going to be sized properly for, for video. So it's 1920 by 1080. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at 10 seconds. You can choose your background color. Um, so it could be white, it could be black. If I want the background to be transparent, often I'll leave it black just because that will kind of reflect how um, usually when we see black in video, we think of it as being just the alpha channel or transparent. So here, click on OK, and now I have Comp 1. And what I'm going to do is take that bird underscore AE composition and add it to comp one. So this is what's known as nesting composition. So I have a layer in comp one that is actually composed of another composition. And if I double click on that bird underscore AE layer, it opens bird underscore AE, the composition. And what I can do is do, um, so again, here in this composition, I would want to do individual movements like the beak moving or the wing move. And anything I'm doing to the, the bird as a whole, I would do that in comp one. Now, the first step before you do anything else, uh, you have to actually turn on a little um, feature that's designed for any kind of vector graphics. And Illustrator files are graph vector graphics. And what that will do is continuously rasterize the, the graphic. So for example, if I took this wing for, and I'm just going to hit S on the keyboard to bring up scale. So if I went in and scaled it up, you'll notice that these edges start to become a little raggy. And that's not what we want from our vector graphics. We make things as vector graphics so that we can scale them up and down without losing any kind of quality. In order to do that, what you have to do is actually click on this little button here, and you should be able to see the difference right away. If you look along this edge, it's now very sharp and clean. Deselect that, it's rough and pretty sketchy look. So for any vector graphic, you have to go in and make sure that is actually turned on. I'm going to resize that back to 100 because I don't really want a giant wing. And what I also need to do in comp one, I need to turn that on as well for the bird underscore AE layer. And now uh, back to bird underscore AE, I'm going to do my nested animation. So the animation that takes place within um, within the, the composition just for those individual bird elements. So here, let's start with the wing. Uh, I'm gonna, I want the wing to kind of move. So I'm gonna start by going in, use the pan behind tool. This is what you use to move the anchor point. And I want the anchor point to be on the wing because I want the wing to rotate there. If I undo that, you can see that the wing would rotate in the middle, and that is not what I want at all. So the anchor point tool, use that to move the anchor point to where you want it to be. And then you can go in and do your kind of wing movements. 
So here I'm going to um, select the wing layer and hit R on the keyboard to bring up rotation and click on the little stopwatch to add my first keyframe. So here I'm just going to add keyframes every one second. I can also change this later on if it's too fast or too slow. And these keyframes are going to be the wing movement. And of course, if you want the, um, the bird to kind of stop at some point, then that's a little bit different. You would have to kind of go in and, and make some, some changes there. But we'll talk about that later here. We're just going to keep it simple. And just add those keyframes all the way. And one last one at the end. And now I am just going to select, whoops, select the, uh, the keyframe in question. Actually, I'll just move the playback head to that. And remember, you can actually jump from keyframe to keyframe using the arrows here. And that is probably the best way. That way you avoid creating extra keyframes that you don't, don't want. And I am just going to go in and move that down. It's going to move up there, go to the next keyframe, and I'm going to move it up a little bit farther to the next keyframe, and I'm going to move it down a little bit farther. Now I could also go in and copy and paste these keyframes, so I'm just repeating a motion, and that is probably what I would normally do, but I just want to kind of keep this relatively simple today. And again, I'm just So if I play this back now, it should be pretty slow the first time through. And it should be a little bit faster after it plays through once. Okay, so that looks fine. That's good for me. I don't want super fast wing movements. So that has added the animation to the wing. I'm going to hit R again to get rid of the rotation property, and that is done. Now if I go to Comp 1, what you'll see is that that animation has come into Comp 1. So anything done in bird underscore AE automatically gets done for the layer in Comp 1. Now I also want to maybe add some Kind of beak movements. I don't want them the beak to move all the way through. Uh, let's say at um, two seconds, I just want a couple of chirps. So I'm going to move the playback head to two seconds, and I am going to select top beak, hold down the shift key, and select bottom beak. And again, I'm doing rotation here, so I am going to hit R. And again, I also need to go in and move that. Move that anchor point so that it's right on the kind of the corner there. So I have to select them separately for that. And now I can go in and add my rotation keyframes. And what I want to do for the first one, I'm just going to kind of move it in a little bit. Not a lot. And then I'm going to add another keyframe. And again, for the second, key, any additional keyframes after the first one, you have to click on the diamond. You move that open, open a little bit farther than it was before. And again, I'm going to go back in and kind of get back, back down. Now here, let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks good. I just want it to kind of repeat a little bit. So what I'm going to do is select those three keyframes just by clicking and then dragging around them. I'm going to go Command C to copy. And then at, uh, let's say, five frames, I'm going to paste them there. 
and then at eight frames, I'm going to paste them there. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom set. Copy that, move to five frames, paste them, move to eight frames, and paste them. And so now I have the wing moving, and I have the beak moving, not all the time, but every kind of few seconds. And again, if I go back to comp one, now I see the wing moving, the beak moving. So all that animation has kind of come into play. Now in comp one, there are a couple of things I want to change. The bird is way too big. I want to scale the bird down. So to do that, I am going to go in and um, select the layer, bring up, hit S on the keyboard to bring up scale. And I am just going to scale scale the bird down and hit R to bring up rotation though I guess I, I'm not actually doing this as an animation so I can just go to the rotation tool and just kind of move it so the bird is now kind of angled more for flight so scale I didn't animate I just kind of went in and and scaled the bird down and then what I'm going to do next is bring up position again just select the layer click on on P, that brings up position. And I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning and the end. And that end keyframe, I am just going to move the bird directly across. So now I have got the bird flying across. The mouth moves on occasion for a little bit, a few sounds. I'm thinking, looking at it, that I might need to um, have the wing movement a little bit faster. So to make any changes, go back to the, the bird. Composition. Bring up rotation. And um, again, what you can do here is uh, just, just go in and I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to get rid of the, the other one so I'm just looking at the, the bird by itself and sometimes it's going to make a lot of sense to just um, lock your layers when you're not editing them just to make sure that they're still you're not changing anything you don't want and you can see by holding down the option key and just kind of moving it like that oh and I am not actually holding down the option key so I'll do that this time it's just kind of pushing them closer together so if we look at that, that's going to be a faster wing movement. And what I can do as well, I can copy that. They're all still selected. And then just paste that. And what I've done is just kind of continued that animation. So when I held down the Option key, it just uh, it didn't change the relation to each other. It just made, it, made them a little bit closer together. So that's the, the best way to kind of do that. Hold down the option key, select them all, grab the last keyframe, and then just kind of go in and, and move it. Now, um, and again, whatever changes I make in that composition is going to take place in the comp one as well. 